Hello, my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Today is our third Monday of the month, which means we're doing a scrap happy pattern. And so this is Woodsy the Owl, the scrap happy owl. Isn't it cute? It's just a fun little pillow. It measures about 10 inches tall and about eight inches across. It's soft and squishy. And the best part about this pattern is it's quick and it's easy and you can make something fun with all your leftover yarns. You can see I used my leftover sparkle yarns for this one, but you don't have to. And we'll talk more about yarn when we get a little farther on in the video. If you'd like to find the rest of the Scrap Happy Patterns, you can find those in my YouTube playlist right here on YouTube. The pattern for this one, written with pictures, you can find that on my blog, and I'll put that blog link right down underneath this video in that description box. So go get in your yarn stash and let's get started making Woodsy the Scrap Happy Owl. <laughs> to make your Woodsy the Owl, you're going to need some assorted yarns. All the yarns that I used are medium weight number four acrylic, and I got in my yarn stash and pulled out a bunch of different sparkle yarns. This one is Karen Party. This one is Red Heart with Love. And then these four are all from Hobby Lobby. The I love this yarn with sparkle, or some of them are called with metallic. They have this thread going through it of that shiny metallic. And I had it on hand, so I thought I'd use it for my Scrap Happy project. The total amount of yarn you need here is about five ounces. You'll need a little bit more of your main color opposed to your striping yarns, not striping yarns, but the stripes on your owl. But all those choices are totally up to you. And then you'll need another one that's gold. And of course, I didn't have a sparkle gold. And so I just grabbed a gold leftover medium weight number four acrylic for the beak. All right. The other thing that you need is two one inch buttons. And I've got these two wooden buttons. And we're going to use those for the center of the eyes. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You need your scissors and you need a needle. And then the last thing you need is about an ounce and a half to two ounces of polyester fiber fill. It's up to you how tightly you want to stuff it. I like to leave it just a little bit loose so that it's nice and squishy. <laughs> okay, so get in your yarn stash. Pull out some of your medium weight number four yarns, and let's make a fun and colorful Woodsy the Owl stuffy. Who, 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 you. So we're going to begin with our main color, and I'm using this brown with the sparkle in it as my main color. So I'm going to make a slip knot, and then I'm going to chain loosely 43 chains. And when I say loosely, it just means just loosen your tension just a little bit because we don't want the bottom of our owl to be all puckered up because we'll be starting at the bottom and working our way to the top. All right, so I'm going to stitch 43 chains just a little bit loose. I've chained 43 chains just a little bit loose. I'm going to join this into a circle. We want to be careful not to twist it. So we're joining to the first chain with a slip stitch and we're going to chain one. Now we're going to stitch a single crochet in each of the chains around. Now we're going to start in that first single crochet and stitch a single crochet and then we'll stitch one single crochet in each of those chains and then we'll join back to that first single crochet. And the reason we're doing it this way is we want the bottom open. 
we're going to be working from the bottom to the top. We'll close up the top, then we'll stuff our owl and close up the bottom. So we're stitching one single crochet in each of the chains all the way around and join back to that first single crochet. I stitched one single crochet in each of my chains around and I'm going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. And it was very important that you not twist this row because we're going to be stitching up off this row. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to single crochet in this first single crochet. Now we're going to skip the next single crochet and stitch a shell stitch in the next. And our shell stitch is three double crochets. One, two, three. So three double crochets in the same stitch. We're going to skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next. Then we'll skip the next stitch and shell stitch in the next. And again, our shell stitch is three double crochets, all stitched in the same stitch. Skip the next, single crochet in the next, skip the next, and three double crochets in the next. skip the next, single crochet in the next. And that is our repeat for row two. Shell stitch, skip the next, single crochet in the next, skip the next, shell stitch in the next. And we'll work this working all the way around this row. We'll continue to work this all the way around and then join back over here to our first single crochet. Shell stitch, skip the next, single crochet in the next, skip the next, and repeat. So I completed the repeat of shell stitch, skip one, single crochet, skip one, shell stitch, all the way around. You're going to end with the shell stitch. You're going to skip that next stitch, and you're going to join to that single crochet. For row two, you're going to have 11 shell stitches with your single crochet stitches in between. Now I'm going to be changing colors here. I'm going to bring in my pinkish color. And I'm going to go ahead and cut off my brown because I won't be using it for quite a few rows um, to do the top of my owl. And so I don't want to trail it along that long on the inside. All right, if you're not changing colors here, go ahead and chain three. But if you're changing colors, you want to do that color change, or that chain three, I should say, after the color change because it counts as the first double crochet in the next shell stitch. And so we're going to stitch two double crochets in this same single crochet. And that will give us our first shell stitch on this row. All right, now we're going to go to that first shell stitch. And we're going to stitch a single crochet in the second double crochet of that shell stitch. All right, now we'll go to the next single crochet and stitch three double crochets, or what we're calling our shell stitch. Then again, you'll go to that second double crochet of that next shell stitch and stitch a single crochet. Then we'll go to that next single crochet and stitch our shell stitch.
And this is our repeat for row three. Single crochet and the second double crochet of each of the shell stitches. And then we'll stitch a shell stitch in each of the single crochets. And we'll repeat this working all the way around. Isn't that a nice effect that it gives us? All right, let's repeat this all the way around and we'll join back to our chain three. So I repeated this all the way around, shell stitch in the single crochets and single crochet in the second double crochet of those shell stitches. You're going to end on a single crochet. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch and then slip stitch in that second double crochet. All right, now I'm going to be bringing the pink back in later, so I'm going to leave my yarn attached. If it's too clumsy for you and you don't want to leave your yarns attached, you can go ahead and clip it. One thing about doing a stuffy is you have plenty of room to weave in all those ends on the inside and not have to worry about having strings show through. All right, so now I'm going to bring in my purple for my next row. And you don't have to change it at the beginning of every row if you don't want to. You can do it as your yarns dictate. If it only did a half a row and you changed in the middle, that's totally fine. I just wanted to do mine at the beginning of each row here, just because I had a little bit more yarn to play with. All right, so I'm bringing in my purple for, let's see, this is row four. So now we're going to single crochet in that double crochet and then we're going to come over here to the single crochet and stitch our shell stitch in the single crochet. One, two, three. Then we'll go to that middle double crochet and stitch a single crochet and then we'll stitch our shell stitch in the single crochet. A bit more yarn out here. All right. And then we'll just repeat this around. Single crochet in the second double crochet of our shell stitches and then double crochet in that single crochet three times for our shell stitch. And again, we'll work this all the way around. Isn't that pretty? I love how this just works up and I love how it kind of resembles the feathers on the owl's tummy. I like that. All right, so we're going to work this around and then we'll join back to that first single crochet. I repeated shell stitches in the single crochets, single crochets in the center or middle double crochet of our shell stitches and then I joined to the single crochet. You're going to have 11 shell stitches with our single crochets in between on all these rows of shell stitches. And so what you're going to do is you're going to continue to repeat row four and row five for seven more rows and you're going to alternate the rows back and forth. The color choices, of course, are up to you, and that's where you get to personalize and have a lot of fun choosing the colors for your owl. So we're going to repeat row four and row five for seven more rows, alternating those rows. So I repeated 
those seven additional rows, and then I did one more. I think it needed an extra row, plus I wanted to finish my pattern, because I have pink, purple, green, white, red, pink, purple, green, white, and I needed the red. So I'm up through row 12, and I think that extra row adds just a little bit more length to it that is needed. All right, so instead of repeating it seven times, I repeated it eight times. I like it, worked out great. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring back in my main color. All right, and you can see I have a little bit of weaving in to do, and I'll do that when I finish with this brown. All right, so we're gonna bring in my main color, and now we're going to do some half double crochet stitches. And what we're going to do is we're going to half double crochet in the single crochet. Then we'll half double crochet in each of the double crochets of the shell stitches. So one half double crochet in the single crochet and one half double crochet in each of the double crochets of the shell stitches. And this is going to give us a nice even row of half double crochet stitches. So I stitched a half double crochet in each of the single crochets and one in each of the double crochets of our shell stitches. And then we join to our first half double crochet and chain one. And now what you're going to do for six more rows is you're going to stitch one half double crochet in each of the half double crochets around. And this is going to be for the head or the top of our owl. One half double crochet in each of the half double crochets around, join back to the first half double crochet and repeat for six more rows. So I repeated those rows of half double crochet, brings us up through row 20. And this is the top portion of our owl. Now we're done adding the rows. Now we're going to close the top of our owl. All right, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna slip stitch across. So you'll go in the stitch on this side and the stitch on this side and pull it across. And just slip stitch it closed. just like that. Go through this side, go through this side, pull the loop through, then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. And we'll just close up the top of our owl. And we'll do this working all the way across. So we slip stitched front and back together we're going to cut our yarn, tie that off, and we'll grab our needle and weave that in. There we go. And then I'll just pull that to the inside. All right, make sure you pull those corners out for your ears, because those are where we're gonna add those tufts of yarn for the owl's ears. Now, the next thing we need to do is stuff it. I've got my stuffing right here, and I'm just gonna work it up into those corners. 
And it's up to you again how much stuffing you want to put in your owl. I don't like it to be overstuffed because I don't want the stuffing to show through. But also, I, well, I like it to be a little bit squishy. So I'm going to put just a little bit more. That's nice and squishy. All right, and now we'll grab our yarn. And we'll do the same thing. We'll fold it flat. Make sure you're folding it the same direction. If you fold it this direction, it's not going to work. <laughs> All righty. So we'll just join down here. Bring in our matching yarn, whatever color of yarn you were using. And we'll do the same thing. Just slip stitch the bottom of our owl closed. And then it will be time to add the eyes and the beak and the little tufts of hair or feathers on the ears and whatever embellishments that you want to add. All right. So I'm just going to work across, closing up the bottom of my owl with slip stitches. All right, let's make some eyes. We're going to begin with the white or whatever color you're choosing for your eye. We're going to slip knot and chain five. We'll join this into a circle. Make that stay knot so our chain five loop stays put. And if you prefer to use the magic circle here or another method, you certainly can. We're going to go in, pull up a loop, and chain one. Now we're going to stitch ten half double crochets in this chain five loops. So one, two, three, four, five, and you will notice I'm stitching over that tail of yarn and that's so we can close up that hole. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we'll join to that first half double crochet with a slip stitch and chain one. We'll go ahead and close up that hole. We'll grab that needle and go ahead and weave this in. You can do it at the end of the eye if you want to. I just go ahead and do it now to get it over with. Then I don't have to worry about it. Just want to make sure that center of our eye is all closed up. Alrighty. So we have 10 half double crochets. Now we're going to stitch two half double crochets in each of those 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, and 20 half double crochets. We're going to join to that half double crochet we started with. So now we had 10, then we went to 20. And I'm going to change colors here. So I'm going to cut my white yarn and grab this purple. So I'm going to join in this purple. I've cut off my white. Chain one. So we're going to single crochet in the first half double crochet. Then we'll stitch two single crochets in the next. One and two. One single crochet in the next. Two single crochets in the next. So we're stitching single crochets one and two. 
one and two. One and two. And we'll do this all the way around the edge of our owl eye. So I repeated that all the way around my owl eye. I'm going to join to that first single crochet. I'm going to tie off and I'm going to leave myself some yarn because I'm going to use this to sew it onto the owl's face. All right, so I'm going to go in that next stitch, pull that loop to the back and then tie off to the back. That way I have a nice appearance on the front. Now I do have a couple of ends to weave in here, but before I sew this on, I'm going to go ahead and sew the button onto my eye. That way it's already on there when I sew it onto my owl. Now, if you're making this for a child that's young that might bite or pull and put this button in their mouth, I would not put the button on there, okay? Because you do not want that to be a choking hazard. But if it's for an older child or maybe a friend, like me, I'm, I mean, I'm almost 60 and I still love Steffies. So yeah, just make sure that when you give this to someone that it's not a baby that's going to put that button in their mouth and maybe choke, okay? You can always start the center with a different color and do the first row of 10 sing or half double crochets in another color in order for that to show as an eye, uh, you know, center of the eye if you are giving this to a baby or in a household where there is a baby. All right, so I'm just sewing that button on. And these holes are pretty tight, but I went through three times. Got that string in there, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and tie this knot for that. And now I'll go ahead and weave in these two ends, and then I'll show you how to sew it onto your owl. I've already sewn this eye on, and you'll notice I did them two different colors, just because I'm keeping with the theme of lots of different colors. All right, so this owl's already, or this eye is already sewn on our owl and I'm going to sew this one on right next to it. All right, now you can pin this in place if you want to. I just don't usually, I, sh I pretty much just eyeball it. And our beak's gonna go right here, all right? And I lined up the eye on that row right there of our first row of brown, just to give it a nice place to be and look the same on both sides. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to follow this line around and I go forward like that and then I do a stitch backwards and forward. I just go around that whole edge. There we go. And I'm eyeballing it, making sure it's staying even with that one. I just like doing it this way where you go back and forth like that because I think it gives it a really good seam around. And I usually go around until I run out of yarn. And sometimes it'll be two or three times. And we just go back and forwards. <laughs> he looks so funny without his beak. <laughs> All right, let's finish getting this eye on here, and then I'll show you how to make that beak and get it sewn on. And then after that, all we have left to do are those little feather tufts on their ear. All right, well, I'm just going to keep going around using up my yarn and making sure my eye is securely sewn on. Let's make our beak. I've got this bright gold yarn. I'm going to make a slip knot and chain two. One, two. Now in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to stitch two single crochets. One and two. I'm going to chain one and turn. And then in these two single crochets, I'm going to stitch two single crochets. So one, two, three, and four. 
and chain one and turn. All right, so now I'm going to stitch two single crochets in the first stitch, one, two. I'm going to stitch one single crochet in the next two, one, two, and then I'm going to stitch two single crochets in that last stitch, one and two, and chain one. Now I'm going to turn and I'm just going to stitch one single crochet in each of these six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm going to turn and work down here. So I'll put another stitch in that single crochet and just evenly single crochet down the side. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to stitch two single crochets in that point and then work my way back up the side. It's kind of a gaping hole there. I don't really like to put them in the holes, but that's the only spot for that. Alrighty. There we go. And then we'll join right to that single crochet at the top. And there is our beak. Now I'm going to tie off, but again, I'm going to leave some yarn so I can sew that onto my owl. And we also need to weave in this end. So let's go ahead and tie this off to the back. And then we'll weave in this end. And I am going to show you something. I had to put a stitch in that hole and it left a little bit of a hole. So when I'm weaving this in, I'm going to stitch this way and then back this way and that will close up that hole a little bit so I don't have a big gaping hole there. You can do that sometimes when you get too big of a hole. There wasn't a place to put that and I wanted it to be even. And so as I'm weaving in my end, I'm closing up that hole as well. All right, now my beak is all ready to go on my owl. All right, let's stitch it on. I wanna set it right at the base of the eyes like this. So I'm going to go in and come up and we'll stitch it on the same way. We'll go around those stitches on the edge and I like to go in and back out. Must have got through some batting there, which is totally okay. And then we'll go back and go to the next stitch. You can pin this in place if you want to. I'm not, I just sort of eyeball it and make it go where I want it to be with my stitches. All right, I'm down here at the point, so I'm gonna make sure I got a nice point going on. We don't want anyone to be mistaken that that's not a beak and think it's something else, huh? <laughs> Sometimes in crochet, shaping can be a little bit difficult and when we can sew it together like this, it helps with the shaping. Alrighty. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna continue on around sewing on this beak onto my owl. And we'll grab those yarns again because we're gonna make those little tufts for the top of our owl ears. So you're going to grab four of your yarns. They can be all the same color. They can be different colors. I decided to go with these four and you're going to need to cut a piece about 10 inches long. 
and then you'll need to cut a second one about 10 inches long and we're going to attach these to the ears of our owl and this is probably longer than we need i just like to make sure that it's not too short okay so let me move that one out of the way we're going to take one we're going to put our hook through and we're going to grab this and it's put on exactly the same way you put on a fringe say on a pocket or a poncho String got in the way and make sure we get all four loops. There we go. And then we'll take that tail and wrap it through. Give it a nice hard tug. And it's up to you how short you want the, these. Looks like that green one didn't come through. Oh, there it is. It didn't get through the back loop. So I want to make sure that one gets through the back loop or it won't lay pretty. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to cut them about this long. That looks like about three and a half inches. And if you want them longer or shorter, of course, you can do that. All right, let's do the other side. We'll go right through that corner. Pull it through. Make sure you got all those loops. Loop it around your hook and pull it through. Give it a good hard tug. And then we want to try to trim them about the same as the other side. <laughs> I think that's adorable. So this is Woodsy the Owl Stuffy. We didn't add any wings. We want him to look more like a pillow nice and rectangle but he does look like an owl just squish his head in just a little <laughs> and i think he's super cute you can see i got his beak just a little bit crooked but i'm okay with that it looks adorable <laughs> woodsy the scrap happy owl <laughs>